Amtrak's cascade of track troubles have been causing interminable delays that have escalated tensions among NJ Transit commuters. Anyone looking for a light at the end of the tunnel will find no new tunnel in the works. David Cruz sat down with the man who knows more about transit than just about anyone, Martin Robbins. So I want to start with some uh, headlines from today. Uh, today, <laughs> Amtrak announcing that they're possibly, they're considering closing tracks at New York Penn for an extended period. And coincidentally enough, New Jersey Transit announcing today that uh, commuters should expect train delays for the foreseeable future. Is this the beginning of that prophesized transit apocalypse that we've all heard about? I hope not. But it is a taste of the transit apocalypse. Uh, I know that we've said for many years that if we lose one of the existing tunnels and we have to operate on a one tunnel system, we would have six trains per in the peak hour uh, coming from New Jersey into New York instead of a total of 24 combination of Amtrak and New Jersey Transit. Uh, that, that is a 75 percent reduction. What we'll probably be facing is something considerably uh, less of a reduction than that, but a taste of what it would be like as you start to strangle or get strangled by the track, the interlacing track, interlocking tracks that come out of the tunnel and go into the platforms. And, and, I wanted to ask you a little bit about that. A, a little bit about that. Uh, talk a, a little bit about what these tracks are and where they lead and, and why closing some of them down is right. so dangerous and terrible. Well, you have to picture in your mind uh, the way uh, the tracks are laid out at the point where the tunnels empty into Penn Station. Well, let's say we have one tunnel that is operating eastbound into Penn Station. As that track enters the open facility and Penn Station, the tracks begin to fan out, and they begin to fan out in a way in which they are Interlo interlocked through what's they called criss interlock. Yeah. They crisscross and they crisscross and they crisscross and they crisscross until trains have an adequate route to go from uh, the tunnel all the way to a another track. New Jersey Transit operates be from generally between tracks uh, one and tracks fourteen. So and, and with some of those tracks uh, less used than others, but. But th that means that once the train comes out of the tunnel, they need to be able to sort out between 14 different tracks. Now, this represents a change in Amtrak policy in a sense that th a lot of these closures would have taken place overnight or during the weekend. And now they're saying, uh, let's bite the bullet. Do, do you think that's a, a better strategy going forward? Well, it sounds like a, a strategy that has to happen. And the part that really the question that we really have uh, to answer is why is this happening? I mean, it shouldn't. It absolutely should not. There is a relationship. Uh, Amtrak is the manager of the facility. New Jersey Transit pays Amtrak a substantial amount of money that has been decreed by the Northeast Corridor Commission. You say it shouldn't happen, but, I mean, how could we expect that it shouldn't happen? These things are hundreds of, oh, 100 year old. Well, uh, railroads have the capacity to be able to maintain a... A, a limited stretch of track like this. It's, it's, it's limited, but it's co as complex as they come. Th those interlocking tracks that we were just talking about, is, it's incredible, like jewelry. Uh, but, but Amtrak is charged in its ownership of, the, of Penn Station to, to be able to manage that and keep it going. And nothing has happened uh, that's extraordinary. I mean, Superstorm Sandy didn't destroy that particular part of the, the railroad. There were problems inside the tunnels, but that's a separate. So no excuse. What's the excuse? That's what I don't understand. I, I'm, I'm flabbergasted that this is happening. And I think that what you really have to wonder is what kinds of management controls have been in place, both at Amtrak and secondarily at New Jersey Transit, to oversee the continued maintenance of these Tracks. This is not acceptable. This past on. month, uh, the governor and New Jersey Transit Management have found a very convenient foil in Amtrak. Is it fair? No, not entirely. I, I think that the, the story still has to be investigated. Uh, I don't think that it's entirely fair. I point to the fact that uh, uh, for the early years of the Christie administration, the number of dollars that New Jersey Transit contributed to Amtrak maintenance of the 
yeah. of the of the Northeast Corridor and Penn Station in particular significantly was reduced. He will tell you, as he told me to to much public acclaim, that um, I'm wrong for suggesting that they have been underfunded. That if you look at the whole scope of his seven and a half years, that they're actually making it, they're getting as much money as they always have, or a little more. Now, aside from the recent increase in capital funding through the Transportation Trust Fund uh, revival, uh, I don't believe that's at all true. Because they've moved the money from uh, the Turnpike Authority and from something called the Clean Air Fund? All or, they did, for the Clean Air Fund. Yeah. But all they did was just simply maintain the level of funding. They did not increase the level of funding. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me ask you this in the 30 seconds that I have left. You mentioned the TTF. Everybody seems to think the TTF is going to come to the rescue. Then some people said, oh, I'll be happy to pay 23 cents gas tax if the TTF comes to the rescue. Is it going to come to the rescue? It's going to help. <laughs> uh, it's going to allow New Jersey Transit to pay the, uh, the proper amount of money to Amtrak to enable uh, the, these facilities to be maintained. It will be very helpful. All right, Martin Robbins, thank you very much, as always, for coming in. <laughs> okay, good.